welcome back. And we're joined by our guest, Abisala Adepoju. She is a trained educationist and parenting expert. She's the lead consultant of the School Whisperer Nigeria, an organization that helps in setting up new schools and helps struggling schools get back on track. She's also totally dedicated to helping teachers reach their maximum potential. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa One with the hashtag Waze or SMS 0818-038-4663. Thank you very much for joining us, Abisala. Welcome Thank on the you. show. Thank you very much. You, you look amazing. <laughs> you can Thank say you. that again. Thank and your hair looks beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll jump right into it again. And um, so my question to you, based on the topic we're discussing today, which is starting and running a, a school. So the idea of starting and running a school appears to have been commercialized in Nigeria. There seems to be more focus on making money, and there's a deviation from the actual purpose of starting a school, which is you know the social impact. Because at the end of the day, um, the school is actually responsible for um, creating the members of society that end up making decisions and, uh, you know, are the ones in our political um, spaces. And also, my question to you, based on your experience and what you do, is for someone who wants to start a school or who's running a school, how do you strike the balance between um, financing the school running it um, effectively and also deliver quality education? Okay, so like I always say to people when they come to me, oh, I want to start a school. My first question to you is why? Why are you starting a school? And you hear a lot of people saying, oh, I know someone, someone who's running a school and she's making millions of naira," And I laugh because they don't know the hard work and the sweat that goes into running a school. So before you start up a school, there are certain steps, there are certain things you need to do first. First of all is have an investment, a large size investment because, so you set up your school, I mean there's nobody in the school yet. If you don't pump in money into the school, the school has to look beautiful because if I'm a parent and I come into the school, I'm trying yes, to bring my do. child Absolutely. here, I need to see that you've the taken time, yes, exactly. Exactly. the ambience, so all of that. the aesthetics, everything. Yes. So if you don't do that, you're not going to get people in. So you need to let people know that they're going to be getting value for their money. And then you need to have a lot of money set aside. Because from trainings and conferences we've gone to, they'll tell you, if you run a school business, don't expect to break even till five, 10 years. Wow. Now, what happens in five, 10 years? The first one to five years, how are you going to pay your staff? How are you going to run your school? You have expenses, there's diesel, there's electricity, there's Loma. Running business in Nigeria. It's hard. Taxes. <laughs> it's hard. There's and Ministry of Education. Exactly. We have, and then if you want to put your sign outside, there's Lhasa. Exactly. So all of government. these things, exactly. All of these things add up. If you don't have the money, you can't say, oh, I'll set up the school and I'll expect that in the first year I'll have 20 children. What if you don't have 20 children? Mm -hmm. What if the 20 children don't come and pay the fees? What then happens? And then I think a lot of people also don't do their homework properly, because you need to do your research. In this area I want to settle, you see some schools, there are already like five schools on that street. And then somebody is opening up and you're thinking, yeah. really? <laughs> you know, in terms of research, mm -hmm. some school owners, apart from monetizing it, basically, why is it that most, or should I say some school owners, how essential is it to school owners to be certified in educational courses? before setting up a school, because some of them are not really, are not, um, they're, not. they're not educated. So that, there's some people that are just opening for courses. business purposes. So yes. it's just, I'll put somebody in charge, mm. make the money, make money, bring the money to me. Exactly. And I've worked in a few schools where that has been the case. And I've also worked in schools where the school owners are, are hands on. Yeah, they're yeah. hands on. And you can see the difference. The difference. Exactly. There's a whole world of difference. So I would say it's essential to have, even if it's the barest minimum training in education, just have an idea. Because, I mean, even if you put somebody in charge who is certified in education, it's whatever the person tells you that you take. Exactly. So let's say one day a parent comes, and then the head of school is not around. You, the school owner, you're on ground. Yeah. And then they're asking you questions about curriculum and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, so, <laughs> now, this is my, just my question. Yeah. 
I have a two-year-old, or mm -hmm. a three-year-old, and I want to place that child in a school. As a parent, what should I be looking at when I go for you know, first-hand inspection of the school? Yeah. What would you advise parents to? Because I, for one, the first is aesthetics mm -hmm. for me, the <laughs> environment. Yeah. The intuition will come in. Yeah. So what do you think? What should it, what's the scale of preference? So I currently am assistant director in a school um, in VI here. And I'm usually the first point of contact when parents come in. So once they come in, I need to sell the school. So even before they look around, I need to have told you about our curriculum, our classes, our times, um, what we offer. So basically trying to you <laughs> to, to sell the child, brand to yeah. sell the brand yeah. and then we go around and then after that I let you talk to one or two teachers mm -hmm. now as a parent you need to always ask to speak to the teacher mm -hmm. if your child is going to be in XYZ class can I speak to the teacher mm -hmm. what curriculum are you running mm -hmm. and then say okay these are my concerns about my child how are you going to help my child attain you know reach his peak Things like that. And then you look around, cleanliness for me is yes. so yes. important. Yes. Major. You know, there's a school smell. Yes. Do we know that school oh, smell? Yes, mm -hmm. I know. A lot of parents are turned off by that. So it's things, little, little things like that you should. And then security as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's watching the children? Do they just let anybody walk into the school? Things like that. Now, I'm always going to look at it from the perspective of the teacher. The teacher is the bedrock of the any school. Mm -hmm. It's not actually the school owner. So um, as, as a director in a school, what, what is the plan or do, why is it that most schools do not have a health plan for teachers, even if they're being paid a given amount? Why is this so? Um, as I said, sometimes to have the health plan, it'll cost money. Exactly. So a lot of times schools haven't gotten to that level where they have spare cash for welfare, so packages, packages, for welfare packages. packages. But there are some schools that actually involve... There are some schools that do that. Mm -hmm. Some schools do that and some don't. Some are working towards it. So that's why I would say when you're setting up your school, you need to put all of these things into consideration. Because some people, some school owners feel, I'm paying them enough. I'm sure they can handle their welfare themselves. But ideally, everybody... Do they really pay them enough? Do they really pay them? I mean... Do they really pay them? It's debatable. It's debatable. It's debatable. Okay. Some, some schools, some schools do. Some okay. schools do. A lot of schools... Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll come to you after. A lot of schools don't have um, qualified teachers. Mm -hmm. It's sad. I was just going to make a comment. How do you, what do you mean they don't have qualified teachers? How? Some of them, they just hire someone who just finished from secondary school. Just come and teach. Because those are the people available. Because NYC, okay. just come and teach. It's so sad. That is why I took. Are you talking about private schools or public schools? I think mostly private schools. Private schools. Oh, definitely. It happens. Definitely. Okay. So let me let me take all the exorbitant school fees. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are they charging them for if they can't even afford to pay their teachers enough? Because this is what <laughs> I'm talking about. You know, so, so I, commercialized. I, I mean, I don't like to say some school owners are stingy, but. To be honest, some yes, school owners that don't want to case. spend that money. Definitely that case. is also that's, part of where yes. I was going to go to because some school owners turn their teachers, who are supposed to be educators, esteemed educators, they turn them to cooks. Mm -hmm. They they Clean tell them, oh, we are supposed to, we have a party, <laughs> we are going to cook the food, bring the plates, bring the pots, and mm -hmm. they turn them to cooks. How does this affect the teacher as an educator in a school? So, I mean, I think the general idea basically is that teachers are not well paid. I remember when I first started teaching, I started in a Kedja on the mainland. Right. And then I remember complaining about the salary one day. And somebody said, oh, if you move to the island, hmm. you'll get you better, know, pay. better yeah. pay. And I got to the island, and I'm like, was it the case? There's, there's no difference. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's no difference. Some people are even better paid on the mainland than on the island. You know, and it's discouraging for people that are actually certified educators because Absolutely. you exactly. go for an interview. Of course. I mean, when I did my Montessori course, yes. I didn't even pay in Naira. I paid in pounds. Mm. Wow. Do you understand? And I know the hard work I put and into the, it. And, and then the I come amount, to the you money. And then and you say you want, want to pay, pay me. 50,000 Naira. Really? That's even a lot. <laughs> 
you know, it, it, it's sad. It is. It is. Very I totally hard agree. And mm -hmm. we're in this position because the government has refused to do what they're supposed to do. So in developed countries where education is critical, and it's critical over the world, look at the, the quotes we had from Kofi Annan, yeah. like, they're not doing us a favor by doing, by playing that role and, you know, um, putting the right amount into, into education. But it's a sad situation that we have to do this ourselves. And um, so my question to you is, you know, what, what's the way forward for the, for the education uh, system in Nigeria? How, how do we actually make this work? So, again, striking that balance between paying teachers so that they're motivated enough to do the work, having the right infrastructure, and then also making it affordable for, for the parents. Making what affordable? Private fees. schools. It fees. Yeah. School fees yeah. I mean, it's, some schools are affordable, but you know, there's some. And again, it's about cutting your costs to your size, right? But because I want the best education you for want my the best child. Education. And you know, like I said the but other day. I want day, the teachers to be motivated enough to teach them <laughs> properly. <laughs> I mean, like I said the other day, right? We have some schools, but yes. a lot of parents are just focused on the name of the school. Oh. I want my child to go to the school, the school simply because everybody else's child is going to the school. And if you check the teachers in this high profile school, and the teachers in a school that not even a lot of people know I the agree name, with you. they're the same. They have the same level of education, they yeah. have the same qualifications. Do you understand? Yes. So, why are you breaking the bank? Why are you stressing yourself and letting your children go to this school when you know you can't afford it? Now, coming back to the question of teachers, I feel like, so you know, the cut of marks to study education in universities in Nigeria has dropped. Wow. I think really? it's like, yes. As if so it's not oh, bad yes, enough as it's like 80 yes. or something. I mean, well, to study law is like 100 and something, or even 200 and something. You see, something we have a priority. So it's that's like why everybody. a call member who studied education will come back without speaking good English. Exactly. Mm. You know what? This is why we're where we are. So it's like if you don't get into a course, just go to education. And then the government, we're producing teachers that. Half baked. Exactly, half baked teachers. There's no passion. There's no motivation. So it's starting from there, there's no drive. It's just a to job get by. to get by. So how about we now look at, and then if you find teachers that have the passion and the motivation, but we're not willing to okay. pay them enough. Pay them. So what do we do? So I feel this is also um, something that co comes to mind on um, underpaid teachers and overworked teachers. Mm. In um, UAE recently, a lot of teachers are actually leaving the private sector and moving on to the public sector. Do you think that we have something like that in Nigeria currently? because Niger um, um, private sector teachers are overworked and underpaid. Um, public school sector are underworked and <laughs> overpaid. <laughs> So, so I, I, but I don't think anybody will leave the private sector and move to the public sector in Nigeria. It's like jumping from five pounds to five. But it's based on the amount they're supposed to pay them. What about government job security? Owned. They don't get, I mean, public teachers, public school teachers don't get that. So I was at a program one day and the teacher was complaining how maybe an SS1 teacher or something didn't come to school for the whole week. Wow. And then when they did their research, no they found out that the teacher, the school teachers meant to teach is in VI. Right, mm -hmm. and the person lives in like a billion bar. Oh or my something. goodness! Now this teacher hasn't been paid in three months, ah. and then the teacher Leg just stopped coming to work because fly to school. has he supposed to get exactly. to work? Do you understand? I'm not. I haven't been paid for three months. My house is. I mean, is so far away from work. How am I supposed to how get to I work? Just... So I think another thing they need to do is, if you have a school in VI, how about you look for teachers within in that, that exactly. But there are some private school owners who do the same thing to teachers who are working for them. Well, and at the end of the day, they, they owe them even, the, let me talk about this oh, one. Wickedness. This <laughs> happened. <laughs> This happened in uh, December. Every teacher needs their monies for Christmas mm -hmm. and New Year celebration. Now, this particular school, or some schools, I won't call names here, some schools did not pay the teachers December salary. Isn't that wickedness from the school owner? It, <laughs> she's passionate about She's a teacher. So. It, it, honestly, it is wickedness. It's but it. again, Aside from the school owners who are just the way they are, there are some who probably could not afford to pay them. Then so why did they the let them walk the through? Because you expect me to do the job, but you don't yeah, expect, not, you don't want me to do the job. No, I'm telling you from no, the 
aspect see. of the okay. teachers. Yes. Um, if if it's no, if you don't stand for the teachers, who will you stand? Who will, stand? Exactly. Who will stand for them? Yes. But it's, you need to consider that some parents don't pay on time. Exactly, that's another some point. Don't. So if the school owner the talks, to the there is something yes. called don't. there is something called interaction. School owners, most yeah. some yeah. school yes. owners do not do not regard the teachers. They even talk you down do on the point. teachers in front of the, the children point. and the parents. That takes and me to my same, question. And at the same time, these parents, at the end of the day, do not regard the teachers, and the school owners does not re have any regards for the teachers. I'm going to ask this Thank question. Yeah. Isi, sorry, yes. just a quick one. Okay. I'm sorry. You know, as okay. a proprietor or as a school <laughs> owner, you have three primary consumers, mm. your teachers, the parents, and children. Sure. Yes, the opposite. So how do you strike a balance? So I, I think, first of all, as a school owner, you need to show love to your staff. You said it all. Your teachers, your administrators, because once they buy into your vision, you mm. need to sell your vision to them. If you're a school owner, you need to sit them down. This is what I want. Do you understand? Because when parents come, they hardly ever ask for the school owners, only if the matter has escalated to a certain level, and then they're like, you know what? Let me see the school owner. But if an issue has occurred, and then the first point of contact is the child's teacher. Exactly. If your teacher loves you, the school owner as a person, the teacher is going to look for every possible way so to, to resolve the, the situation. That's true. Exactly. That's true. Even they're if loyal. he's sticking, they're loyal. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you treat your staff. That is why I was saying that <laughs> the school owners should pay you them. Pay, but you know, because it's not even about if, the pay. If, they, if, they, if they couldn't meet up mm -hmm. with the payment, yeah. the and school owners, yes, yeah, the school owner Don't decides to like say, okay, I, this is the reason why I haven't been able to meet up with the yeah. communication. Yeah. Effective exactly. communication. Do you know that will make the teacher feel important yes. in the True. system? Yes. Yes. But a situation whereby you just go on a wall. You are missing in action mm -hmm. until it is resumption. Exactly. And this, when, when this thing actually happened in this school, five teachers, you in fact, you all, the, all the teachers practically resigned. Guess what? She will get a new set of teachers and in the, January. And exactly. they will do the same thing and to her. Same thing to because them. she doesn't care. She will get. I mean, come December, even if you they can't They won't pay even them wait till summer, then. Give them rice. True. Give them True. oil. True. Give them something. As and little then treat them as like human beings. Like you appreciate exactly. them. And like you appreciate them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you see, everybody is human. We just we need are. to know. Yeah that you regard us, you Absolutely. love us, you Absolutely. appreciate, you appreciate our work. efforts. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what it. counts. Once they feel that, they'll go the whole nine years. Well, exactly. It appears most of these school owners are very capitalist in their approach, and it's just more about the money they make. <laughs> for themselves. Capitalist. Exactly. Exactly. Capitalist. They're just a tool to make the money. They don't care. That's so it. again, going back to, it's been commercialized so much. Yes. You know, exactly. They're forgetting the actual purpose, which is, you know, yeah. um, creating, uh, what's the word now? A, a, a wonderful ambience for the yeah, students no, 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 and the learners. Can I ask a question? And, okay. Do you want to ask okay. a question? Last one. one last um, question. There's quite a number of parents that come to school to dictate to the school owners what they want. Exactly. How they do you do. balance that? Exactly. Well, it depends on how strong the school owner is. Because there's some school owners you can't dictate. You don't want them to, to take their child away. That's oh, fine. No. You so I have my standards. That's the thing. The it's fear service. of parents is what sets a lot of people back. Do you understand? Oh, I'm scared. I don't want them to take the child away. If somebody comes to meet you, this is second term we're in, right? And the person hasn't paid fees. And you're like, you know what? If, you're, if you don't pay X, Y, Z amount, your child cannot resume. And then the person says, you know what? Don't worry, I'm taking my child to another school. OK, go then. So if you can't even pay me for second term, you're going to take the child to a new school and where you have to pay joining fee, the game. development fee. You have to buy uniforms all over again. How are you going to afford that? And at the end of the day, it's not also good for the child because there is, the, there is so much instability. Exactly, taking them from place to place. Yes. So I think a lot of school owners and administrators need to toughen up a little bit. Mm. Parents can come and try to shake them. And they do that all the time, mm. simply because they feel if they leave, your school is going to collapse or crumble. But if you make them realize that, look, I appreciate your business. I love that your child is here. I love that you're in my school. However, my school will still thrive if you leave. Once they understand that, then even they today wouldn't come and threaten you. So whatever you say is yes and 
Yes, and that's it. So your word should be final and law that's as it. a school owner. Yes, and then so you, you should need be to able to balance in it what out. you're selling as well. Exactly. That's it. You need to believe because if somebody comes to you and like, okay, what what changes am I going to see in my child at the end of first term? And you're stammering. They, um, <laughs> um, um, that's it. I mean, that is another thing essential as, as per school owners not being certified exactly, educationally. Exactly. It's all for monetary gains. It is. Exactly. It is. And again, you know, we go back to the federal government. You know, in 2019, the budget allocation for education was less than 7%, mm -hmm. which obviously clearly shows you that it's not something that they take seriously. Human mm -hmm. capital development is not, you know, important to them. What are your views on this, you know, the allocation of such allocations to education and compared to what our counterparts in other countries, you know, allocate to education? To be honest, I feel like Nigeria should really take a cue from other countries. I mean, there are countries like Finland, where everybody's raving about the educational system. Um, I think Finland teachers are like the highest paid they in the country. They are the highest paid. They're even paid higher than doctors, the doctors and, and the lawyers. lawyers. But that's and the, the way, that's the way it should be. So exactly. I'm thinking, I mean, why why hasn't Nigeria tapped into that? Why, Means that the politicians why, are more paid. Exactly. <laughs> why why <laughs> the priorities are misplaced? That's, that's, that's the truth. So obviously education is not a priority for them, and that is so sad. How do we? How do we? How do we make sure this changes? Sinasa, this narrative? I really don't know. How, what do we do? Is the government? Because everybody keeps saying, "Is the government? Is the government?" Anyways, we're, we're going right. to keep fighting. We will. We and will. everybody, I mean, everybody always says it. We keep fighting. We keep pushing, and we pray. Yeah. That we'll keep praying. Anyways, <laughs> thank you very much, Abisala. Thank you very it's much. It's been another me. insightful session, ladies. Did you enjoy that session? If, oh. if, 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 <laughs> It's not my fault, you know. It's so painful no, it, it that you, you put in so much. You love these children as if they were your, your own. And at the end of the day, you don't get appreciated for it. Absolutely. You know, with the little token that you're supposed to be paid. Absolutely. Anyways, in case you missed today's quote, here it is. Education is a human right with immense power to transform. On its foundation, rest the cornerstones of freedom, democracy and sustainable human development. And that was a quote by Kofi Annan. Thank you, ladies. We have had a very, very interesting session today. I'm Absolutely. Very, very Insightful as well. Abisala, <laughs> we'd love to have you again. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Catch us live every weekend from Friday to Sunday at 8 p.m as we bring thought-provoking, engaging, and informative conversations to your screens. You can also watch repeat broadcasts on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sunday at 3 p.m. It's been wonderful, and thank you, ladies, for a great conversation tonight. And please follow us on our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. See you all tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>